This morning, I'm going to talk about uh, a topic that uh, many of you guys may have not heard taught much in your Methodist church, uh, but I want to talk today on the ministry of angels to believers. Now, I am not one that's had encounters with angels, but just because your pastor hasn't encountered it doesn't mean I don't teach about it. If it's in the Bible, your pastor's going to teach you about it. I am waiting for some angelic encounters. I pray for angelic encounters every single day. And I probably have angelic encounters every single day. But to, to be more wise and to be more, to have my eyes open. And I'm going to pray for you today, or my wife will pray, somebody will pray for you, that your eyes will be opened up to more of the spiritual realm. But as a pastor, as a lover of God's word, I want to take you into God's word and show you the ministry of angels to believers, to you and I, that you may not even realize what's been going on. So I, I'm going to title this, serv this message today, My Angle on Angels. Let's all say that together. My Angle on Angels. There we go. And uh, to start out, Hebrews 13, 2 says, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Isn't that fascinating? That when you're out in the midst of uh, helping people and showing hospitality, that, that there are people that you have encountered that could be of the angelic realm. Do we have that slide show up? It's titled Angels. I know I, I'm, I'm real secretive on this stuff, but sometimes it, it jumps off somewhere. I get it. It might be in the songs file or presentation file. So let's give God some praise this morning. It's good. So one of the goals today, thank you guys. Uh, one of the goals today is when we talk about angels, we should never focus on angels. We should always focus on Jesus. There are some people that get so caught up into the supernatural realm that they, they lose their footing. And Jesus said in John 1, 5, 1, he said, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Jesus. So we understand that, that the angels operate through our relationship with Jesus. How many want to know more about angels? Amen? So, the, remember Jesus himself, when he went into the wilderness, that angels came and ministered to the Lord Jesus. Now, if the ministering angels came to Jesus, how much more do you think we need the ministry of angels? Because we think Jesus, he's the son of God. Why would he need angels? God sent him angels so that he could be strengthened during his times of temptation and to be encouraged and strengthened. Matthew 4.11 says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. It's good enough for Jesus. It's good enough for me. So I'm going to be praying today. I'm like, God, what does it mean that there are angels with us wherever we go? Uh, the Bible says, and it talks about the little ones in Matthew 18, that God always sees their angel. Now, most people believe, biblically, that each of us has an angel that's with us all the time. That protects us, that guards us. I don't, I've never, again, I have never seen an angel. Has anybody seen an angel here? Okay, you've seen them. Okay, you've seen angels, right? And sometimes we don't realize it, and it's kind of like... You know, it's like asking, who's humble here? You know, <laughs> no, you're not. You just raise your hand. You know what I mean? It's kind of embarrassing. But there was a, there was a, one time there was this one boy, little boy, he was probably four years old. And there was an angel in his room. And every, every night he would talk to this angel. And his mom and dad were Christians. And this little boy was seeing angels. And so one day the dad goes in and he says, son, what's the angel saying? And he's just saying, God loves you. I don't know what he was saying. And then he says, ask the angel why I can't see him. And the little boy says, why can't daddy see you? And he goes, you're not pure enough. 
You wonder why, you know? And so it's important that we're going to learn what angels do and how we can increase in our realization that angels are real and how they minister to us. But, I've, but we're going to go, go at it from the Bible. What a good place to start. Here we go. First thing I want you to fill in today, if you have your bulletin, is that angels are worshipers. How many want to bring angels into Gateway? Come on. Like, don't, like we're not up here. We are low hype ministry. High power, low hype. How many have been to a church before where it's all hype and no power? Right? I don't want that. I'm not, I'm not afraid to be excited and energetic. But can I tell you, I'm not in the hype. The Lord's not in the hype, but he's in the power. And power comes when we worship. And when we start worshiping, angels will jump in and dance with us. That's why worship is so powerful. Hebrews 1.6 says, And then, when he presented his honored son to the world, God said, Let all the angels of God worship him. How many know the angels worship Jesus? <laughs> Jesus is not an angel, okay? He showed up in the Bible as the sent one of Yahweh in the Old Testament, but he is above the angels, and the angels worship him. Psalm 148.2 says, Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Now, if you can look this up on the Internet, there are times when uh, there was a, a worship service going on and everyone stopped and they listened and they could hear the sound of angels singing in the background once everyone stopped. You go onto the Internet and you listen to a song. Write this down. It's called Fly by Jason Upton. Anybody ever heard the song Fly by Jason Upton? They were recording this time of singing and worshiping and when they listened back to the recording, they heard an unknown voice singing in the background. The recording engineer checked all the channels to try to find where that voice was, could not find it. It's the sound of an angel. When you hear it, you will agree it's an angel. You'll feel it. It's fascinating. How many are grateful for the ministry of angels? Amen? <laughs> so angels are worshipers. Number two, angels are warriors. Angels fight for us. They do battle for us. They protect us. They watch over us. And God did this so that we would feel safe here on planet Earth. We can recognize that there are different angels that do different things. Revelations 12, 7, it says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. So there is a lot of warfare that goes on in the spiritual realm, and a lot of things that are happening right now, we don't even see it, but it's going on. We don't recognize the power and the authority that is going on all around us through our actions, through our prayers, and through our thinking, you know, we attract angelic activity if we have the right patterns going on in our minds. If we're, if we're praying the blood of Jesus, if we're living a life releasing, for, how many know forgiveness is a powerful force? Christianity is about forgiveness. And we're letting go of the trauma of our past so that there can be angelic activity going on around us and not demonic activity going on around us. So we have to be aware, like, is there an area in my life I need to forgive? Is there something I'm, is there voices that I'm listening to? Because there's warfare going on we need to be aware of. Number three is angels are messengers. Angels will actually bring us messages to guide us in direction. If you're like me, I need a lot of help. I need God's voice, but sometimes we don't understand how angels operate. I believe healing operates through angels oftentimes. That we say, Lord, I thank you for healing that's coming. And then what's it say? The angels ascend, go up to heaven, grab the healing, and then descend. Boom. Healing takes place. 
So there are things that sometimes we feel, we think it's the presence of God, but it's actually an angelic being that's with us or near us. How many have ever felt, how many hair has ever gone up on their elbows or whatever on their forearm? Job chapter 6 says that's a sign that a spirit is in the room. You're like, whoa, something's going on here. So being aware that in, there is angelic activity that happens, and we need, we need to enhance it. The angels listen to what we say. Somebody comes in, I'm, oh, I got a cold. Well, man, I'll probably get it too. So guess what happens? Your angel's there to protect you. When sickness starts coming at you, the angel's like, well, he said he's going to get it. I'm not going to protect him, right? Because your words have authority and the angels are subjected to our words. So it's important that we are not careless with how we speak because we can be empowering the good or we can be empowering the evil. So vital that we realize that. And when you're spending daily time with Jesus every day, he'll tell you what to do. He'll give you guidance and direction. Because angels are there to minister to you, help you do the will of God. Well, if you're not doing the will of God, don't expect any backup help. We have to go. So angels are messengers. We see this in the book of Luke. And it, it says, and this was when Mary was being told by Gabriel that she was going to be impregnated with the birth with the Son of God. And the angel answered, I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Now, in the Bible, there are actually three different types of angels mentioned. There's obtuse, acute, and right angels. No, no, forget that. That's angles. Okay. I'm just seeing if you guys are, are paying attention this morning. These are angles. Okay. We're going to talk about angels. Okay, you guys awake. All right, just making sure you're awake. All right, let's give God a praise offering. Come on, that, was, that wasn't good. All right, just making sure you're awake. So the first one is Gabriel. Gabriel is the messenger angel. You'll find this in the book of Daniel, that Gabriel would come and he would bring a message. He brought a message to Daniel. He brought a message to Mary. And he was a named being. And remember... When something is named, it's, it shows that it's an individual, has a purpose. Remember when Jesus would show up, I call this the pre-incarnate Jesus in the Old Testament. Everyone was asking him, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? And the angel would never give it to him. Tell me your name. What's your name? He says, it's too wonderful for you. Jacob wrestled that angel all night to get his name. But the angel's like, nope, not getting it. But you're going to limp from now on. Thanks a lot. But then Jesus reveals, his name is revealed in the New Testament. But these angels would come. Gabriel is the messenger angel, and that's the purpose of this angel. So it tells us that certain angels have certain purposes. Michael is known as the warrior angel. We find this in the book of Revelations and also in the book of Daniel, that this angel fought back the principalities and powers so that Daniel could receive the message he was waiting for. And the last angel that's mentioned is the fallen angel by the name of Lucifer. Little Lucy, who I write about in my new book. Who has committed the unforgivable sin. Who is doomed and pitiful. Who is my enemy. Who's your enemy. And I'm going to conquer him. I'm going to put him under my feet and so are you. He's not Jesus' enemy as much as our enemy. But it's many scholars believe, and I believe this as well, based on Ezekiel 28, is that Lucifer was once the worship angel in heaven. He is defined as the Prince of Tear, and he was basically created to have musical instruments on his body. And his job was to, to cover God's throne with praise continually. That was his job as the worship angel. Now, again, this is imagery. I believe it, but I can't 
give you scripture verse to declare this is absolutely what it says. But it seems to be that he was in charge of worship. And remember, Satan was cast down to this planet. And when Satan was cast down to this planet, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And then the earth became void and without form. The Hebrew says it became tohu vabohu. Sounds like something you'd get at a, you know, vegetarian restaurant, right? Tohu vabohu with tofu. I don't know. But tohu vabohu means to be empty and void. It's a place of demonic activity. When Satan got kicked, Lucifer got kicked out of heaven. He came down to this planet. And we want to think about this. So Lucifer was in charge of worship. That was his job. He was created for it. He was covering the throne of God with praise. And then he rebels because he thought too highly of himself. He began to um, say, I will be like God. I will be like the Most High. And so he gets kicked out of heaven. And where does he go? He gets cast down to planet Earth. I'm giving you the whole picture. And then God says, wait a minute. We're going to take back planet Earth. What's he do? He puts a man by the name of Adam in a garden. And he says, be fruitful, multiply, and rule the earth. Take back the planet for me. Following me so far. Our position now is to take back this planet for Jesus. Now, Adam and Eve stumbled in the garden. And then Jesus came as the second Adam to redeem what Adam lost. Because remember, the devil says, I can give, he told Jesus in the wilderness, I have all authority on heaven and earth. I can give it to you. Or he said, I have authority to, on, this, on this planet. I can give you all the kingdoms not in heaven, but in earth. Who gave it to him? Adam did. God gave it to Adam and Adam forfeited it. But Jesus came back took the authority from the devil and gave it back to us. So, for you and I, your prayers sometimes do not work. Keep trying, though. Keep doing it. You're going to get it. You're saying the right things. But are you saying them with the authority that Jesus gave you back that Adam lost? Are you, are you walking in that authority? So I don't ride horses, but they tell me that when you're riding a horse, that horse can tell whether you're afraid or not. <laughs> it will tell you. You're a chick. You're, it'll, it'll sense the fear on you and it will take control. The devil is like an animal. If he senses the fear, he will take control. So my job as a pastor is not just to get you knowing the right thing, but it's to get you in that place where, wait a second, I got authority. I've been Jesus purchased back authority for me to walk in. And I'm going to walk in it. We were at the uh, crossroads, had a new gal come in um, to the recovery program and teaching on healing. Of course, when you teach on something, you practice it. Just like some guy comes with a vacuum cleaner to the door trying to sell you a vacuum cleaner. You know, try it out. You know, does it suck up dust and bugs and dogs and cats and little children? I mean, I want to see it do some great stuff here. Right. So. We were able to pray for this one gal, just got into the program with a knot in her back and a couple of the girls began to feel heat on their hands and, and we just said, let's just release the power of God into her. We prayed for it one time. Her pain level went down from like a 10 to a five. Then Jesus prayed twice. Then we said, let's release it again. Pray, pray for it again. Her, uh, the knot in her back went away. Pain completely left. So thank you, Jesus. Let's give him praise. Amen. So the angels come and they bring us messages in Judges 6, 12. It says, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, the Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. How many know angels come to encourage you? 
You're a mighty warrior. Be encouraged. Paul and Mary encountered and received direction and understanding through angels. Paul was on a ship. He was about to be shipwrecked. And this is what he said. So remember, if someone comes to you and says, I saw an angel last night, I was visited by an angel, that is normal biblical behavior. If you read something in your Bible, Paul was talked to by an angel, you should immediately say, God, I want to talk to an angel. Whatever you see, anything God has done anywhere, anything God has done at any time, you can do now. Anything God has done through anyone, you can do through me, you can do through you. So we're expecting these things to happen. Acts 27, 23, and 24. It says, for this very night, here Paul is, he's been on the ship for, you know, 200 prisoners on there. They're about to die. And Paul says to the captain, for this very night, there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted all those who sail with you. Come on, how many, how many know when you're doing the will of God, you're going to fulfill the will of God. There's nothing that can harm you. <laughs> There's nothing that can harm you when you're in the will of God. You understand that? Jesus is going to send his angels to make sure you're, you fulfill that. Because that's why. So we need to know and understand what the will of God is. When the Lord tells us to do something, we just need to be immediate and do that. Oftentimes the Lord's like, hey, I want you to call this person. We're like, nah, I don't know. You know, we, we make a hundred excuses. Just do it. Just do it real quick. You know, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. He was like, very early in the next morning, he went out. I'm not saying sacrifice your kids, but I'm just telling you. He was like, quick, right there, ready to go. So there's a book that I would highly encourage you to buy. It's by Kevin Zadai. And he says this. He says, it seems that praying in the spirit... And angelic activity are tied together. He said, I've had several visitations of angels after praying in the spirit for a long time, long periods of time. And this is your prayer language. We all pray for you. If you've not received your prayer language yet, we want to pray for you to receive that. But just praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, God begins. There's spiritual activity that happens. Number four, angels protect you from danger. Psalm 91 Verse 1, no, sorry, verse 11 and 12. It says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Angels are protecting you. Every believer is safe in his care as he ushers each one into his or her destiny with him. The mighty angels of God are in charge of this process. So the angels are considered the special forces that have special assignments from the military branch of heaven's kingdom. It's kind of like the secret service or the FBI. They, there's, a, there's a military side of God when you're out completing God's will. That's where you and, you and I, we need to be committed to do the will of God then there's angelic activity that follows us because we're doing God's will. Brian Simmons writes in uh, the Passion Translation, God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. You guys can get excited anytime. I, I haven't even got to the good stuff yet, so don't worry. This is just the appetizer. We're bringing out the main course very soon. You guys ready for the main course? Yes. It's good. Like, just think about the protection that God gives for you. Now, I have been, you know, in the process of translating, and one of the words that I've discovered that oftentimes is not translated uh, many times just differently, it's the word that many would call, they would say, uh, Jehovah Sabaot, or Yahweh Sabaot. Everybody say Sabaot. And this is a, a term oftentimes translated the Lord of hosts. How many have read that in their Bible? He's the Lord of hosts. But host doesn't seem like a great word. 
I'm going to give you some definitions of host in a second. But the Lord of hosts, or some vary it, and appears 284 times in the Old Testament. It's the term in Hebrew called Yahweh Sabaot. So it actually means, in a more powerful way, that God is the leader of heaven's angelic armies. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the one in charge of a heavenly army of angels. He's, he's Yahweh Sabaot, Sabaot. And so because of the translation, he's the Lord of hosts. Now a host is a person who receive, receives guests. Think about, and now the host of our show for Family Feud is, you know, like just someone who welcomes in guests. That, that's not what this word host means. Host is actually, it's an older word that, or actually it, it can also mean um, a multitude or army created to deal with an enemy or a hostile. You hear that word hostile? He is the Lord who rises up against all hostilities and enemies. So I think a better translation is he is Yahweh, who is the head of a heavenly army going after those who are hostile against his kingdom. Yeah. This is how I find my battles. Here we are. So the Lord, the Lord will fight for you. But what hinders angelic activity is we stay oftentimes in bitterness. We stay out of God's will. We stay in places of trauma. And we have to, we have to learn how to let go of some of these things so we can see more of the angelic stuff happening in our lives. Anybody want to see more angelic stuff happen besides me? Number five, angels minister to you. Remember like I started today. Angels minister to Jesus, the Son of God. Now, man, I wouldn't think Jesus needed any help. Just saying. Like, really? Jesus was ministered to? Yes. Matthew 4, 11, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. This is the uh, Greek word, diakonao, and it means to be an attendant, to wait upon, to minister as a friend. Now there's two times angels showed up for Jesus. The first time was when he was in the wilderness. The angels came and strengthened him. The second time is right before he went to the cross. Those are the two times that angels came and ministered to them, ministered to Jesus. And we have to be aware that, that God has been, is, is ministering to you in that place of trauma or difficulty. Some of you may be going through super difficult times in your life. Lord, I thank you for angelic activity over my life in this season. I thank you that you are sending strength to me. You are sending help to me. You are sending those to serve me. Yeah. Hebrews 1.14 says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Can I tell you that you know, I was talking to someone yesterday whose, whose relative was about the past, and I said, I've heard this, that angels work the hardest five minutes before the departure of a person on earth. They work the hardest to bring them the message. I believe that. And I believe us coming into alignment with God's will, God's plan, we're going to see more angelic activity are you guys excited for more angelic activity? I mean, higher levels of worship, daily encountering Jesus, and then we come together and we have a corporate encounter. The declarations, we're learning how to break down some of those nasty patterns we have in our mindset that I'm unworthy or I'll never account for anything. Um, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm ugly. Whatever you're declaring of yourself, you, you begin to come into alignment with the kingdom. Because the angels will be more active 
when we're walking in his word, Psalm 103 says this, verse 20. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. See, angels follow obedience. When you step in to that calling that God has on your life, the angels are going to show up. We want to be able to do everything in our own ability before we commit to something. You'll never do anything. You're not capable. But he is. So we step out and we go, okay, God, if you don't do something, it's not happening. Well, they say people want the comforter, but they stay in their comfort zone. Kevin Zadai said this, Christians must understand the importance of telling the truth and keeping one's promises because the next move of God and the working of angels require Christians who are truthful. That move also requires that Christians do whatever they say they will do. We can't let our words fall to the ground. Now, if, if whenever I speak, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll do this, that voice stays in my head until I check it off. I've got to do that. I've got to complete what I say or at least tell the person, I can't do what I said I can do. Please forgive me. Because we can't let our words fall to the ground. If you want more angelic activity over your life, be careful what you commit to. Definitely watch what you say. And when you say it, do it. So three things as I close, close up here. I'm landing this plane. Are you guys all right? Yeah. First thing we've got to do is um, if we want more angelic activity, is that you? Yeah. Okay. Sign me up for more angelic activity. Number one is obey his word. Angels obey his word. You and I must obey his word. Get into alignment with your thinking, with your thought processes. Forgive who God calls you to forgive. Take your declarations out this week and take the five minutes to declare truth over your life. Can I tell you that Christians who don't pray enough, it's probably because they don't declare, or they don't speak over their own life enough. And they feel like a worm. They feel like a beggar instead of feeling like a son or daughter to enter into prayer. When I wake up in the morning, if I feel like I'm in a funk, I do my declarations and I feel like, this is who I am, righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I was created to do great things for God. You begin to speak these things over your life, and that truth brings forth reality. That's what your words do. You'll either grow daily or you'll die gradually. Grow daily or die gradually. We want to choose life, not death, choose life begins with how we speak, and from there we can obey His Word. You don't feel like reading His Word? God, give me a hunger for Your Word. God, I don't feel like forgiving. Lord, help me forgive. Every day we're praying, God, give me the strength to come into alignment with Your Word. Number two, pray in the Spirit. Believe when you pray in the Spirit, this is an unknown language. You're praying to God, but you're creating a spiritual atmosphere. You're declaring things that you don't understand, but you're pulling things in from the spiritual realm when you pray in the Spirit. Groanings and utterings. It's not from our mind, but it's from our spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. And the last thing to pray for is just to ask to see into the spiritual realm. It's not that complicated. Lord, I want to see into the spiritual realm. Some of us have never even asked because we didn't know it was a legal prayer. Is that legal? Can I ask to see into the spiritual realm? You need to see into the spiritual realm. <laughs> when you see into the spiritual realm, you see the heavenly armies coming your way. Fear can go to hell. <laughs> Shame can go to hell where it belongs. <laughs> so I'm encouraging you today and I, I'm going to close today so ask for your eyes to be open and then let's stand together I'm going to have Deb come up and close the service here 2 Kings 
Here's the story. Elijah, Elijah has a servant. He looks over at his servant. His servant's freaking out. Oh, what's going to happen? There's, and for good reason. The entire Syrian army is in front of him. Oh, what are we going to do, Lord? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I love this. It says, then Elijah prayed and said, I wonder how he prayed it. Like, oh, Lord. You think it was like that? Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Elijah prayed. That's why I'm going to have to pray this over you today. I'll be out at my book table if you want a book. But she's going to pray for you that your eyes will be open. And this is what I love what happened. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Deb's going to pray over you. God bless you guys. Lord, we thank you. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. So just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Die, man, it's do or die. Trying to stay up in the middle, man, that's suicide. Be hot or be cold, what's it gonna be? Go, let's go, let's go. Be below a it's all I wanna see. If you ain't saying nothing, then you saying something. What you see is what you get, man, I ain't never fronting. I see your problem, I'm lazy, cause I ain't never running. Opposition uh, passing uh, it off, cause uh, they ain't never want it. Come on. Time to say goodbye, and it's you and I. Whoa. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. Whoa. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Time to pick a side, homie, do or die. Whoa. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. Whoa. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Whoa. No mess, no backs for me. Both middle fingers up for Dr. G. I'm never gonna listen to his latest pitch. Or the scarf queen, his Dr. Brooks is a... Whoa. I'm an American with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment to defend it. Whoa. You want our guns? Well, calm and take it. I hope you're good at dodging bullets and you're praying. Whoa. The year 2020, the year of provision. The time when you and I have to make a decision. Open up your minds like Hunter's laptop. But when you see corruption, this time it's gotta stop. Whoa. Back the police, say no to the beast. No to the mask, take no vaccine. Back the police, say no to the beast. No to the mask, take no vaccine. Let's go, let's go. I'm gonna say goodbye if it's you and I. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Come on. Time to pick a side, homie, do or die. Whoa. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. Whoa. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Oh, come on. If you compromise, it'll multiply. Treat you like a doormat, think you speak your mind. Ain't hard to find, you must be blind if you can't see the sign. I got a spine, I won't never, never let them take what's mine. Time to unify, I'm talking you and I. If you ain't riding for the cause, better move aside. Whoa. Sit back, watch me work, I'ma do it right. Time for you uh, to pick a side, uh, it's looking like uh, a do or die. Time to say goodbye, it is you and I. Whoa. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. Whoa. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Time to pick a side, homie, do or die. Whoa. When you compromise, it will multiply. We ain't never scared to put it on the line. Whoa. It's time to pick a side, it's do or die. Our country will never be a socialist country. We're not going to let it happen. And that is another lyrical miracle on the Thrive Time Show. And just as we have been born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. So Jesus came in a physical body. His physical body was, was murdered. It was butchered. It was strangled. It was said he, he didn't even look like himself by what he went through. He came in a physical body to do something for us. But how many know that we are now the second physical body of Jesus Christ? I want to say that again because that may offend you a little bit, but think about that. You and I are the second body, the second physical body of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? We're going to suffer like Jesus suffered? We're going to be persecuted like Jesus was persecuted. 
but we're going to carry that same authority and power that the first physical body of Jesus carried. I don't know if anyone's going to get happier in here this morning or not, but I'm trying to tell you something. We are that second physical body of Jesus for the world. John G. Lake, when he established the second body, the church, he never intended that it should be of lesser authority or lesser power than the first. How many know the first physical body came with power? People touched him. They were healed. Jesus was walking through the crowd and a sick person touched him. He said, Ooh, power went from me. John G. Lake is saying that there's no less power that should be on the second physical body of Jesus. He says it was his real purpose that the second body, the church, should exercise and fully accomplish all that the first had done. Uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit has been is mentioned three times in the Gospels. And um, let me just read you one of the scriptures. Jesus said, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. Okay, so this is a pretty heavy scripture that Jesus is describing here. So Jesus is addressing in uh, the, the context here, I believe the fate of Satan and other spirit be beings versus human beings in the physical realm. This, the blasphemy of the spirit, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is a sin that Satan committed. And when we look at this in context, you'll find that there are two times in the uh, teaching that Jesus mentions Holy Spirit blasphemy he starts off his talk with saying, all sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. So he starts off to say, listen, everything man has done is forgiven, but what Satan and his angels has, have done, that is unforgivable. Now, why is, why is this teaching important? Well, let me give you a story. As When I was first came to Christ, when I was uh, at Penn State University, a uh, you know, number of years ago when I was in college, I remember uh, there was this one girl in uh, in one of our campus groups, and one day she just said out of the blue, she said, hey, as I was praying the other night, I decided to start praying for Satan. And I thought, why Why are you praying for Satan? And she said, well, I, I figured, you know, if I start praying for Satan and he gets saved, then what happens is then the whole world would be changed because no longer would Satan hate us and hate Jesus because he could actually get forgiveness. Now I didn't understand, you know, I didn't know how to respond. I mean, you know, I understood her thought process, but I knew in my spirit, that's not, that's not a good plan right there. And um, so when we look at this scripture, we can see the reason why Jesus said that that sin is unforgivable, unforgivable because it was being applied to Satan and his angels, the fallen angels, that we should never pray for them because they, they've committed an unforgivable sin, but it doesn't apply to us. It doesn't apply to any man or woman on this planet. So again, Jesus said, all sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. Amen. So we don't have to worry or, or be um, even concerned about the guilt or the shame that, that Satan would love to put on us uh, about this portion of scripture. Satan and his kingdom have committed spirit blasphemy and can never be saved or redeemed. Jesus is teaching us that the fate of the kingdom of darkness is unalterable. So he doesn't want us wasting our time praying for Satan to be saved. manager of Gateway Hunger Relief Center and um, I've been about here about 14 years. This has been a blessing to me and my family to be able to serve. We need your support. 
And the reason why we need your support is because our numbers are growing, for one thing. The need is great here in Richmond. We're able to provide fresh produce and sometimes milk and just meats and everything like that. And your donations really mean a lot to keep this program going. Uh, we also serve the seniors and we also make kiddo bags. So every child gets a bag to take home that's got mac and cheese and drink and little snacks in there for them. And we just love being able to pass these things out and bless families. And if you love seeing your seeing families get blessed in Richmond, come donate to Gateway Hunger Relief Center. Shelby Jones. Hi, my name is JD Marker. Hi, my name is Jenny. I just love blessing the people and seeing all the smiling faces and smiling kids. I come, love coming here. It gives me something to do every day. I like to give the people God in their hearts and I like to spread the word of God around to everybody. It's been a blessing. I've been here for 14 years and I hope to do it for another 14. I don't know what I'd do without him really. I'd be home doing nothing. I just love being here and helping people. I like to give out food and help people. God bless everybody. Hey everyone, I want to let you know about my newest book. It's called, Are There Two Powers in Heaven? And I've been working on this book for about the last 10 years. Many of you guys know I was in kind of a hiking accident last year, and I just took that time to really invest in writing. Uh, Killing the Devil with Ink is a good prophetic word. And uh, one of the books I really wanted to get into your hands this year was this book. And this is a, the largest book I've ever done. It's uh, got 95 chapters. It, the premise of this book is that the Jews in the time of Jesus were expecting this figure called the Son of Man. Now, most people believe that Jesus, when he claimed to be the Son of Man, that he was actually claiming his earthly title. But when you discover in the book of Daniel, there was one like the Son of Man that came alongside of the Ancient of Days. And this, was, this idea is called the two power in heaven belief. Um, and this is what I wrote this book about, is to help you see the Jesus in the Old Testament and see that he is revealed, um, he is concealed in the old and revealed in the new. His name is hidden in the Old Testament, but is revealed in the New Testament. It is gonna shift your paradigm. Uh, the people who have read it so far, they said, man, this is intriguing. I've never uh, considered understanding the Bible in this narrative. And I believe it is the narrative that the Jews had in the time of Jesus when Jesus came to the planet, including the early disciples. I believe the early disciples understood that Jesus was coming to fulfill uh, the claims of the Messiah, the claims of the Son of Man, he was coming to fulfill those very things, and he did so like a hand fits into a glove. Jesus fit into not only the prophecies, but into that very role of the Son of Man and the Messiah so completely and so thoroughly. Friend, I encourage you, go on to Amazon. The hardback is $14.99. You can download this immediately for $9.99 on Amazon Kindle. And leave a review. Let me know what you think. I hope that it is a blessing to you as it has been to me. God bless. Said man's rights rest in three boxes. The ballot box, the jury box, and the cartridge box. Now, if you believe like I do that the ballot box has been corrupted in America, And if you believe the jury box or the court system has been corrupted in our land, do you believe that? Then there's only one box that's left, and that's the cartridge box or the ammunition box. 
That's what Frederick Douglass said. So what we have to stand up for right now at this time is that if you mess with those other two boxes, we're going to mess with the final box. So don't mess with those boxes. Does that make sense to you? When you violate something as sacred as voting and sacred as our biblical foundations, then you leave us only one choice. We are not violent people, but don't you dare touch those boxes. This is where we need to see a backbone rise up again in the church. It's where we need to see a backbone rise up again in our government. We're called to the signs and the wonders and the miracles, but we're also called to love deeply and to make a significant difference in people's lives. We're called to move the needle in our region. And it's not just with the supernatural spiritual stuff, but it's with some of the practical stuff that we can do. You know, a few months ago, I had, I don't want to call it a vision. I want to seem like I'm super spiritual, but I was just in time and prayer. And I began to, the Lord began to show me this, this river. And he showed me this river and, and, and I was on the shore of this river. And as, as I was looking up the river, here is floating down the river people who are, are bruised and beaten, even some corpses. And, and, you know, we're calling people together and we're running into the river and we're dragging some people out. We're, we're giving them medical aid. We're, for others, we're just grieving with them and we're burying their bodies. And I know it's kind of odd, you know, and, and there's children, there's old people, and we're just running in and doing all this work and, and we're getting exhausted, we're getting tired because the people keep floating down the river, injured, dead, maimed, and suddenly somebody says, we need to go up river and see what's happening and change the situation up river. Because we can focus on providing the needs and helping, and we still will always do that. But what if we make a journey up river we find out what's going on upriver and destroy that evil work that's upriver. And so we are not just reaching out and helping those who have been hurt and wounded and killed, but we're actually stopping the process. I can feel a world of difference 
Suddenly the room is shifted. I'm finding it again, the wonder of your presence. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, teach us how to pray. I'm Pastor Chris Monahan, and I want to let you know I've developed a course on prayer, which is a 13-week video course along with a study guide, plus the audio book of Disturbing the Present, chapter by chapter, to take you through training you on the power of prayer and declarations. I want to make this available to you through our Gateway Equip, our online school to help you become equipped not only with your prayer life, but also to learn how to declare over your own life so that you're built up and you have throne room confidence when you pray. And this is gonna be made available to you. Just go to our website at www.igateway.org. The course is $35 and just sign up online and get started along with many other courses that you'll find on our online equip school through Gateway Church. Sign up today, God bless. Why do you find that countless times in the Bible, God himself actually changes someone's name? We find that Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter. We find Jacob struggling with an angel and saying, what is your name? The Bible itself has over 40,000 names of persons, of places. And what I've done is I've taken the 3,250 different names in the Bible and I've placed their meaning right next to the actual proper name in the scriptures. And this project has taken me five years to complete and it's called the Name Translation Bible. As a pastor, I want you to go deeper into the Word of God. And I'm giving you a tool that will save you time, save you effort, and allow you to get the greatest revelation, the deepest revelation possible as you study God's Word. We look forward to you going deeper into the Word of God through the Name Translation Bible. God bless. In the midst of this pandemic, families have lost jobs, their sources of income, or even their ability to go to a grocery store. On top of that, due to COVID, many programs that are meant to help families in this very time of need have had to shut down. But we have chose to stay open. Our team at the Gateway Hunger Relief Center has seen this need. We have been able to adjust to this ever-changing world and look out for these families. In October alone, we have been able to provide food for 3,233 families. And as this need inside our community grows, so do the opportunities to sponsor families. We love having the opportunity to bless families in our community, and we want to let you be a part of that. This is where you come in. For just $5 a month, you can sponsor a family, making sure that that family is covered and receives food. But the question isn't how much, it's how many, how many families do you want to feed for the months to come? We want to make giving as safe and easy for you as we can. So simply text HRC family to 41444 and follow the link or simply click the link in the description to start your automated monthly giving. The food pantry has really helped my family. It's helped us a lot. Uh, they helped me quite, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I like I like coming over here. Friendly oh, people too. Thank you for partnering with us and relieving hunger in our community today. <laughs> Thank you. A little bit of